Howdy and welcome to the 10 Week Bible Study. This is week two, day three of our study of Ephesians and Philippians. I'm your host, Darren Hibbs, and today we're talking about Ephesians 2, 11 through 13. Welcome back to the 10-Week Bible Study. Again, I am your host, Darren Hibbs. And if you ever have any questions or comments about the podcast, the 10-Week Bible Study in general, I'd love to hear from you. You can send an email to me at darrenhibbs.com, or you can find all of my contact information in the show notes and description. With that, let's go ahead and jump in, or let's uh, pray before we start today. Lord, would you open our eyes and our ears to hear what your word has to say to us, God. Speak to us. Fill our hearts with the knowledge of you. We want to know you more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. With that, let's jump into God's Word. I'll be reading today from the NIV. This is Ephesians 2, starting in verse 11. Therefore, remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision, which is done in the body by human hands, remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenant of the promise without hope and without God in the world. All right, there's a lot in that short little section right there. Uh, Paul is speaking primarily to Gentiles here. And we've spoken about the differences here a little bit in the past. And so I want to break out some distinctions that Paul would have understood and that people at this time would have also understood. In the book of Acts, Many people don't understand that on the day of Pentecost, there are thousands of people that became believers. A lot of Protestant Western Christians, I don't know where this has originated from, but most people have the misconception. I say most people, almost everyone that I've I've run across has this misconception. And it's very clear in the book of Acts. So it's it's not that the the Bible is unclear on this. It's just something that's propagated kind of in in Western Christianity. And the misconception that most people have is on the day of Pentecost, there were all these people from all over the world who came to Jerusalem. There's all these foreigners. And so there were tons of Gentiles that got saved on the day of Pentecost in the book of Acts. And that's absolutely not true. There are no Gentiles, none, that got saved on the day of Pentecost in the book of Acts, or at least they explicitly don't say anything about it and they save when the first Gentile gets saved, becomes a Christian for Acts chapters 10 and 11. So on the day of Pentecost, we have all of these people, Luke lists out all of the different people in the book of Acts who have come from all over the world, but they are not Gentiles. They were all Jews. They had all made a pilgrimage to Jerusalem for the, for the Passover And they stayed the 50 days to celebrate Pentecost. I mean, back in those days, it was very difficult and costly to travel, you know, long distances. And these people had come from long distances. And so it was very difficult and costly for them. And so instead of coming for an extended weekend over Passover, they made the trip and they stayed the 50 days so they could also celebrate Pentecost. And perhaps maybe some of them were staying even longer. And so there's people from all over the world, but they're all Jews. They're all making this pilgrimage to Jerusalem for the Passover and for Pentecost. Now, the distinction that that is is pretty clear in Acts is that there are different classes of people, different kinds of people. They didn't really have them orchestrated into classes like we might think of, you know, like in a caste system like in India. But there were, of course, the Jews. They were the native-born Israelite Jews. Second to them, in the understanding of the first century Jewish culture, was what they call the Hellenized Jews. And this is what Paul is. Paul is writing this, this epistle here of Ephesians. And Paul was a Hellenized Jew, meaning he was a Jew in every conceivable way, by birth, by religion, circumcised, all of those things. But he was not born in Israel. He was born somewhere else. So Hebrew was not his native tongue, or at least it wasn't the only language he spoke. He spoke some language that people amongst kind of the Greek diaspora spoke. And so they were still Jews, but they were kind of second-class citizen Jews, as we see on occasion in the book of Acts, that they were actually synagogues for Hellenistic Jews, even in Israel. Third to that are Jewish converts. 
And what these people are is they are Gentiles who have decided that they want to honor and worship the the God of the Israelites, the one true God. And so as adults, they the men get circumcised and their they and their entire family start abiding by the laws and the customs of the Jews as, as best they can. But the number one thing is that they get circumcised. And so they're kind of a third class citizen, if you will, but they're still Jews. And so there might have been Gentiles on the day of, Pente- on the day of Pentecost when this happened in the book of Acts, Gentiles who had converted and been circumcised and followed the laws and customs of the Jews. They would have been in the minds of Jews at the time, they would have been considered Jews. They would have been considered Jewish converts. The fourth type of person in the book of Acts and in the early church and the early church world was a God-fearing Greek or a God-fearing Gentile, someone who believes in the God of the Jews, the one true God, as opposed to, you know, believing in paganism or all these other idols and things like that. A a, a God-fearing Greek or a God-fearing Gentile would believe in the one true God, but had not taken the step of becoming circumcised. That still makes them a Gentile. They may honor and venerate the God of the Israelites, but the Israelites would not have considered them Jews, would not have considered them in the fold of those that would inherit the kingdom or eternal life or anything like that. They are still on the outside, but they're they're adjacent, you know, but they are still reprobate in, in their minds. And then you've got the fifth class of people that they would have thought of as the pagans, just the, the rank and file People that don't believe in the one true God, don't believe in any God, believe in all the pagan gods, whatever. Those are the the pagans. And so Paul here is is speaking to a group of actual Gentiles, people that were either pagans or God-fearing Gentiles, God-fearing Greeks, but most definitely not Jewish converts in any way. He's speaking only to these Gentiles. And so what he's, he's saying is, you guys were uncircumcised. And so before... All you know before Jesus came, you're on the outside. You don't get to know God. You are outcasts from the kingdom of heaven, is what Paul is saying. And he's saying, you know, the circumcision of the Pharisees is who he's really talking about. These guys, they made sure that you knew that you were on the outside and that you are reprobate, that you are hated by God. That's who the, the, when he says the circumcision, he's really just talking about the Pharisees. But then he adds that these people of the circumcision, they circumcise by human hands. The circumcision, it is only done by human hands. But he's going to go on and, and explain that there's a circumcision of the heart that happens through Jesus. In Acts chapters 10 and 11, in Acts chapter 10, we see a story Luke tells us a story where Peter is, he has this supernatural experience where he has an open vision and he sees all this food and and he's told basically to, to go to this person's house when he's asked. At the same time, this Roman guy, this Roman soldier, Cornelius, you know, someone who's already hated by the Jews, a Roman soldier, Cornelius, who is a Gentile, he, is, he was considered a God-fearing Gentile, a God-fearing Greek, because he did honor the one true God, but he was not circumcised. He was not a Jewish convert. He is praying and this angel appears to him and says, send for Simon called Peter in the town of Joppa and bring him here. This whole story gets reiterated twice in the book of Acts. And anytime details like this are reiterated in scripture, it's because they're very important for us to wrap our minds around. And so Peter goes to Cornelius's house and, He shares with them the gospel before he's even done sharing with them the gospel. Cornelius and everyone in his house, the Holy Spirit falls on them. They get baptized in the Holy Spirit and they start speaking in tongues in the exact same way that Peter had experienced on the day of Pentecost. And so Peter's like, oh my gosh, we just need to baptize these guys. They're not Jewish converts like every other person had been up to that point and what they might have required of people. Of, of Gentiles wanting to become Christian up to that point. But when the Holy Spirit falls on them, Peter baptizes them. When he gets back, he tells the story. Everyone is up in arms in Jerusalem when he tells the story about baptizing Gentiles in the name of Jesus. And so there's a huge debate over this. 
I mean, the the Pharisees who become Christian at this point, they're really upset about it. All the other <clears throat> disciples, they're not sure what to make of it. And so they kind of have this hearing, if you will, in, in Acts chapter 11, where they decide, what do we do about this? And they come to the conclusion, they feel led by the Lord, and they come to the conclusion that Gentiles should not be made to convert to Judaism before they can become Christian. Up to this point, we see in the book of Acts that that was how they thought about things. If you want to become a Christian, you first have to become a Jewish convert. You have to get circumcised, you have to obey the laws of Moses, all of these other things before you can become a Christian. And in Acts chapter 11, they make this monumental decision and they decide, no, Jesus didn't intend this. He did not He did not intend for this to happen. And so Gentiles do not have to become Jewish converts. And that's what Paul is saying here is, you guys, it is amazing for you because you do not have to become Jewish converts to become a Christian. Verse And, and he's saying, before all of this happened, you had no hope of being reconciled with God apart from Jesus unless you became a Jewish convert. Verse 13. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. The blood of Jesus reconciles the Gentiles to God. If we accept Jesus, that's the requirement. The requirement for Gentiles like myself is not that I have to perform all of these things or do all of these things, nothing like that. The only requirement is that I accept Jesus, that I pledge my allegiance to Jesus. This is huge. This is monumental. This is this is world-changing what Paul is talking about here. In Acts chapter 11, it was a world-changing moment, unthinkable for centuries and millennia before then within the Jewish mindset or the Israelite mindset. And so what God has offered to Gentiles is that we can come into the fold of the children of God without having to first become Jewish. And that's huge. Now, I want to say a caveat to this, and and there are lots of different thoughts on this, lots of different ideas on this, and I don't weigh in so much. There are I've met Messianic Jews who believe that Jewish people still have to abide by the laws of Moses. I met Messianic Jewish people, meaning Jewish people who have become Christian, those people, I've, I've met them where they, they believe that they still have to abide by the laws of Moses. I've met them where they don't believe that they should obey the laws of Moses. I've met them where they believe everyone, Gentiles included, should still become Jewish converts and obey the laws of Moses and observe the feasts and all those things. I, I've, I've, I've encountered the wide gamut and then a whole bunch of other thoughts outside of those three types of Jewish uh, believers that are crazy. <laughs> There's a lot of crazy people nowadays that say that they're Jewish and believers. There's, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking of a couple, you know, one like the black Hebrew Israelites, which are just a bizarre, strange group that I'm not even sure anyone should consider them Christian or Jewish at all. But at any rate, the, um, the, these three groups of people, there's all of these different ideas floating around. One of the things that as a Gentile I will not do is tell a Jewish Christian that they do not have to abide by the laws of Moses. The decision made in Acts chapter 11, it was very clear and it only applied to Gentiles. And that's what Paul's talking about here. It only, only applied to Gentiles. Now, whether a Jewish person who's become a Christian, whether or not they want to continue abiding by the laws of Moses and the feasts and the festivals and all those kind of, that's up to them. That's between them and God. But as a Gentile, I am not going to tell them that they don't have to abide by those things because nowhere in scripture does it say that. Now, for their conscience, uh, for their sake, that is completely up to them. If you are a Jewish convert to Christianity, if you are a Jewish person who now believes in Jesus as the Messiah, those things I believe are up to you. But as a Gentile believer, I am not going to tell you to disobey what the Lord has said that Jewish people should obey. But it is clear that Gentiles do not have to obey that. But if our allegiance is pledged to Jesus, God accepts us into that fold of the children of God. This is a, a really interesting passage 
I think, a deep passage that Paul, what Paul is talking about here. But it's amazing because Gentiles like me can come to Jesus as we are without having to jump through additional hurdles. We can come to Jesus as we are. How powerful, how amazing. For the 10-week Bible study, I'm your host, Darren Hibbs, and I can't wait to see you next time.